Uh, okay. We don't have any choice. Uh, if it's if it's bad, I'll try switching my my mic. It sounds really bad. Amy, if you can hear us, you want to be sure that. Uh, We've got good sound. We've got good sound. Okay. We are, we should be live. We should be live. Got a few minutes here. Uh, Amy, let me ask Amy. Amy, does it sound good? She said it's very bad. Okay, let me try. Um, ask her if it's better now. No, it's worse. I hear it. You don't need to have her tell you. Hey, everybody, bear with us. We've got some some microphone difficulties. Yeah. Hmm. Let me just check one it's other. Every thing. time you start talking, Dad, something's real bad. But I hope that anyone joining us is having a better day than my dad is right at this moment. Uh, I don't know about everybody else, but I've for our happy half hour today. How is it, I, now? How is it now? Oh, now it's excellent. Okay, there's something yeah. fun with my with my fancy microphone. So, oh, I know what the problem is. Let me go back. Hey, everybody, you're getting a watch in, in real time as we try to figure out which microphones are which. Uh, hang on, one more try here. Is it still? Hey, Brenda. Is it? Is it? Thank you for joining us. We are so excited technical difficulty and all to be here hanging out with y'all today. Is it good now? Hey, Martha. Yeah, you sound great, Dad. Okay, I just had the I just had the thing charging. That's all. Okay, good. Hey, I think it is now 430. We can go we can officially hey, start up. Hey, welcome, everybody. Welcome to the second happy half hour uh, held here by Sam and, and me at Carolina Retirement Planners. If you if you are a guest, you don't know us. I'm David Shikavage. My daughter is Samantha Sam Shikavage. We are the principals of a of Carolina Retirement Planners right here in Wilmington, North Carolina. So Lula. welcome everybody. Oh, they're all coming in here. It's good to yeah. good to see you all joining us. Sam, how was uh, uh, how was your week this week? Oh, my week was great. Actually, one of the highlights of my week had was relating to you. Oh, yeah. Yeah. This was a great Sunday. You know, Sunday was Father's Day. And 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 Sam and I have not gotten, and Sandy, we have not gotten together personally for a long time. Sam's husband, Neil, was working at a grocery store. So we just kind of kept apart. And two weeks ago, he he left that job. And after the 14 days were up on Sunday, we got together. They cooked us a marvelous dinner at her house. Steaks, baked potato. Uh, a twice baked potato. Twice baked potato. It tastes so much better the second time it's baked for some reason. Yeah. And Neil made this peach cobbler that was to die for. I mean, it's just the best cobbler I have ever had. So I'm a happy camper. And, and the wine and, and Manhattans did not hurt either, you know. So it's it's mm -hmm. good to be. It's good to be. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Here. We got it from. Uh, we got pretty much everything from either Port City Produce or True Blue Butcher and Bakery, or True Blue Butcher. And yeah, our there. <laughs> if you want steaks, real steaks, that's the place. It just. If you're not afraid to drop some money on a very happy cow. Yeah, the, the cows. The cows were happy. You can taste it. You can taste it. So. Mm -hmm. But it's you know good to see everyone. And uh, you have any other anything else exciting at your place lately? Well, one of the things since we've moved here, we've realized that we have a lot more wildlife. We've got a lot more birds and bunnies and such. And so I've been trying to get into bird watching. So uh, we've put up some feeders around the yard, and I've been I have all the apps to identify them. And you'll recognize these, Dad. I have a. Uh, these binoculars that were my great grandfather's. It, actually, it's it's an interesting story. My grandfather, Zygmunt Shikavich, coal miner, came over from Lithuania, literally across the wall, one step ahead of the, 
before he got recruited to the Russian army. And in his, in his days, he would sit there drinking warm beer. He would take Polsky Piwo beer from Philadelphia, put it in hot water. Uh, he drank that in whiskey and he watched the birds with those binoculars. Now, when I was a teenager, I kind of absconded with the binoculars and the nerdy teenager that I was, and like the nerdy adult that I am, I used to do model rocketry and I'd use those to watch my rockets and see where they landed. So um, that was kind of a, uh, an interesting, uh, it's interesting that they're back watching birds now with his, his great granddaughter, so. Yep, uh, I gotta sit here and watch a, a pair of cardinals at the bird feeder just, uh, you know, just about an hour ago. It's one of those solid state things that never go out of, never get obsolete, you know? Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, Amy says that Zygmunt is her uncle's name and he's straight off the boat from Poland. I, I actually want to- Lithuania. I was lobbying with my wife that if we had a boy, we named him Zygmunt. And if we had a girl, we name her Veronica after my grandmother. Mm -hmm. I lost that one, but you know, yeah. maybe it's for the better. Maybe it's yeah. for the better. But, well, what, what has everybody else been up to? We'd love to hear what you've been doing to keep busy during all of this and uh, what and, you've been enjoying and enriching in your life. And if you got some questions, type them in. There's a place info below. Let us know you're here and, and, and we'll, we'll see how many we can get the answers we go along. Mm -hmm. So, but I want to start by asking folks here a favor. Uh, I'm, I, as you know, for the last 10 plus years, I have taught classes or taught workshops rather at, at local colleges and universities. I've held workshops at colleges and universities. And uh, boy, we can't do that now, but I love I loved teaching and people need to know this more than ever. So the trouble is the workshops are like, um, they're like, five hours long and uh you know it's like just uh no one wants to sit in a little screen for five hours not even me i don't want to teach on a little screen for five hours so what i thought i'd do is take them and record them in the little eight to twelve minute nuggets of wisdom in each of those and put them online for everyone to see and they're here on this website called rogo.com and I'm showing it to you now, but you can go when this is over to rogo.com. It's a domain I've owned for 25 years. Another story there, maybe we'll tell in a future one. It involves an Israeli physicist, material requirements planning, and a love story thriller. But anyway, um, this is a, a, a website where I put a whole bunch of these videos up where you can see I'm adding more. And if you could look at them and tell them if they work for you, if they're helpful, if they're understandable uh, and, and share them with others. Get me some, give me some input. Is this, uh, is this, is this working for you? So yeah, that's one been, new you've thing. Been spending a lot of time getting those, getting those up there. A lot of, put a lot of time, energy, sweat and uh, tears. I, you should see the office. It's like a studio. We got nothing but lights and cameras and how to, and I got the fancy microphones and it's just to make yeah. it sound and look as good as I can. So, so take a look at rogo.com and let me know what you think. Uh, let me know if it's useful for you. So that's kind of the, um, that's kind of the one, one new, one nice piece of news, but what do we, uh, what are we talking about today? What's our topic today? Uh, Dad, today we are talking about how to build a robust retirement portfolio. Um, yeah, what, remember, I like people, we, we want people to email us what they'd like to hear, topics they'd like to have co covered. And last week we had a lot of inquiries like, what's, what should I buy now? What's the fund I should buy now? What's the stock I should buy now? It's like everybody's kind of looking for uh, the 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 one the one mutual fund, the magic mutual fund that'll solve all your problems. It's kind of like they they're all looking for the single golf club that if they go out with that club and they swing, they're gonna they're gonna get a hole in one every time, or or even the particular set of golf clubs that will make them win. When it's really not a given club that makes you win, it's 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 the strategy you're using, it's the swing. And, and I thought we ought to sit back and do some 
basic strategy and talk about that because that's really what you need to do for a portfolio in retirement. And um, we're going to go through some of those pieces. I'm Sam. You're Sam's going to start. She's got one one set of descriptions all queued up. Absolutely, Dad. And uh, Martha Meredith, thank you so much for, uh, for, for watching them and giving us your feedback. We really appreciate it. Um, and hey, right. Teresa. And hey, Clancy, Clancy. Clancy, I see is doing his own videos on birds and things. And uh, Teresa, good to see you. Jeff, you know. Thank you for bookmarking Rogo. R-O-G-O.com. Martha, Dawn. Yeah. So... All right, so uh, one of the things that we want to do is kind of take a step back. We wanted, we wanted to peel the onion, you know, look at it from a broad overview at this point. So I'm going to share my screen with you. Uh, one of our favorite th ways to describe it is as three tall buildings. So you go to any big city, you're in New York or Chicago, and you walk around and you're surrounded by tall buildings. Well. Three of them are where you have your money. You've got your bank, your bank building, your stock market building, and your insurance company building. Um, and aside from physical gold and physical real estate, these guys are what's trying to, to take up our retirement nest egg. Most of our retirement nest egg and our savings are in these three buildings. And each of them has advantages and disadvantages to the way that they handle your money. And there's three ways that we kind of evaluate these, three, three criteria. Uh, one is safety. Um, you know, is it safe from a market downturn? If something goes out of business, is it going to be safe? Um, growth, is there a potential for growth? in there, can you potentially earn money? Liquidity, um, and liquidity is essentially how quick can you get your hands on it? So real estate, your, you know, your home is not liquid because you have to go through selling it to get the cash in hand. Um, so first, if we look at the bank, and when you have a bank, it's mostly CDs. You may have a money market, you may have a savings account. Now out of whenever you have your money in there, is it safe? Yes, your market isn't, your money is not gonna go down with the volatile market. And as long as you have 250,000 or less in a single account, it's insured by the FDIC. Even if the bank goes out of business, the money's gonna be there. Mm -hmm. um, is there growth? Is there potential growth? Not really. Nobody goes to puts their money at the bank because they know that they're going to earn a lot of money. Um, you know, interest rates at this point are barely keeping up with inflation. Is it liquid? Um, with a bank, yes. Uh, it's you know you can get the cash almost instantly. Now, if you look at the stock stockbroker, you know this is going to be your you know your Fidelity, your Vanguard, any place that you go to invest in the stock market. Now, is the stock market safe? No, uh, we don't have to look back very far for a very real example of how much risk we are taking in the stock market. Um, is there a potential for growth? Absolutely, that is why people invest in the stock market is because you really do, when, when things are going well, you have an opportunity for a lot of growth. And is it liquid? Yeah, you, know, you can just sell your stocks and get the cash fairly easily. Now, an insurance company, uh, in, in, in this case, we're gonna be talking about fixed annuities. Now, is a fixed annuity safe? Yes, this is gonna be a principal protected product. When the market goes down, your balance isn't gonna go down. Uh, is there a potential for growth? Yes, uh, it has been, you know, they've been getting a lot fancier these days. They have uh, some really nice indexes that they can use to grow your money whenever things are doing well. And is it liquid? Well, kind of. <laughs> it's partially liquid. Uh, you can get some of it out. Most insurance, most uh, annuity companies will let you take out between seven and 10% a year for the first few years. So you do have access to it. Uh, 
but not all of it at once. So you're giving up a little bit of the liquidity to get the safety and the growth together. Which uh, so when you look at any of these any of these places you can put your money, any of your investment, you can get two of the three. And so what we're going to do now, and what what David's going to do is he's going to pick apart kind of how we can use all of these to to build a robust retirement plan. And in the meantime, I see Matt has asked a question: Should we have money in all three buildings? And you can see each has advantages and disadvantages. And the answer is, yeah, if we put all three together correctly, we can do, we can do well. So let me switch uh, cameras now and go to the whiteboard mm -hmm. and talk a little there. So- hey Jeff, thank you for watching our Rogo videos. You've got to let us know what you think. Yeah, so- um, Again, we have the three buildings, the bank building, the stock building, the insurance company building. And how do we use this and put this together into a strategy that works for us? And I want to kind of use an analogy. Um, and I'm going to use sort of a sports analogy. You know, you have sports teams. Say you have a football team. On a football team, you have offensive players and you have defensive players, right? They each have roles to play. It's the same way in a sense with, with a portfolio for retirement. Uh, you have offensive players, they're out there for growth. On a team, an offensive player is fast and nimble and can move really fast. Right? Yeah, offense is a sexy thing. That's the sexy thing, but at the same time, they can, they can fumble the ball, get tackled or get hurt. Yeah, throw an interception. And then you have defensive players. They're there to protect. They're big and solid and hold the line and you can count on them. That's the same way in a, in a, in a portfolio. You can have players like that. And what we do is we divide the portfolio into two parts. We got the, we got the defensive part and the offensive part. And again, the, the offensive part, you can imagine, that's sort of your stock market. And the defensive part is the, is the job of the banks and the insurance companies. Banks and insurance companies build defensive protected products protected principal products and the stock market is the offensive products and it's it yeah, really going to keep you safe there in the defense you can keep it safe here now let's think about let's think about how you might use this you know when the when the market's going up boy it's like the offense is throwing touchdown after touchdown things are going really good you're making lots of money but then you have a time when the market drops and it's like you, they fumbled the ball, it was intercepted, you're, you're losing money. Now, I'll tell you, when you're working, I, and let's go back a ways. I, I'm pretty sure everyone on this video remembers 2000 when the, when the dot-com bubble burst and the market fell in half and it took, it took seven years to come back up. And remember 2008, when it fell by more than half, and that was the credit default swap real estate that, you know, mess. And, and I also bet that most people here were working then. And when you're working, you're a buyer. Every month you're buying more stuff in your 401k, you're putting money in. When the market falls in half and you're a buyer, it's great, things are half price. You buy twice as many stocks with your dollar. So when it comes back, you've got even more money. When you're retired, you switch from being a buyer to a seller. Now you got to sell money every year, every uh, year to live on. When the market falls in half, you got to sell twice as many stocks as you uh, to get the money to live on. And when it comes back, they're not there to recover. So there's kind of a big difference. And you know, when you're younger and working, 
you have more money on offense because you got longer to go and can be struggling getting that growth and you don't need to pull it out. As you get close and into retirement, you want more on defense. So when we have that big drop, now you can pull the money out of this side, out of the protected side to live on and let this side recover. And um, that's kind of a, a, a little description and analogy on how it works as you get older. Again, you want more on, on the defensive side and, and a good portfolio is building a blend of those two. Mm -hmm. So dad, are you saying that, you know, trying for us to sit here and try to tell you to pick this mutual fund or this particular stock, uh, it's, it's kind of like saying that Tom Brady is the only thing that's that's bringing up, well, it used to be the Patriots, right? Uh, the, you know, it's not just about Tom Brady. He's not the only reason that they win the team. It's not just the quarterback. It's, it's they win it's games. The whole team they working have, together with a good coach is what makes the, is what makes the team successful. That's what yeah, wins Super it, Bowls. It all, exactly. It all needs to be well-coordinated. And as they say, you know, a good defense, uh, a good defense is the best offense. That's right. And there's and been games where the offense didn't play very well, but the defense still saved the day, you know? Yeah, and I can tell you, it's not always the most exciting to watch the team that has a really excellent defense who just is good at just getting the ball up the field nice and steady. But oftentimes those are the ones who come out, come out ahead. And that's defense, what we want for your retirement. Defense can be boring. These, they, these two buildings are kind of boring. You don't, you don't hear anybody on the news talk about these two buildings every day. They're telling you what the stock market did yesterday, today, or in the last 10 minutes. But they don't talk about these. They're not sexy, but they're crucial if you want to go. Ahead. Now, I'll tell you, let's go a little bit further. When we have our offense we might go further and break that into pieces. What we might typically do is do three parts here. We might do one part for growth. This is something that's usually a mixture of stocks and bonds that we're, we're trying to, to get the growth in the market and taking the amount of risk we feel is appropriate. Over here, we have one part for income. We might have a piece for income where we're buying high dividend stocks and, and other things that mixture things that'll give us some income. And we might have a tactical one, one that, and this has been one that's been real interesting this past year, where it'll look at the market very often, sometimes daily and move between stocks and gold and bonds and cash trying to preserve principle, but still getting growth. So when you mix it up even more, you'll have times where maybe one or two are down, but one of them is up. And now you have a different places to pull your money in retirement. Yeah, so you know, it sounds like what you're saying is, uh, you know, it's important to be diversified. When I look at, when I look at your pie chart up there, I see a lot of different places that your money is in. So you're not putting all of your eggs in just one basket. Not putting your eggs in one basket. And I'll tell you what else is nice about this. If, if let's just say you have a 50-50 mix and this part, the market falls, this part loses nothing. And let's say this part lost 20%. Well, the total portfolio would only be down 10%. And I know many folks who are clients on here have experienced it this year because this is generally how we build, we build strategies. You kind of want to keep your losses if you can in retirement under 10%. Depends how much money you have and all, but you see the robustness when you, wow, half my money didn't lose anything. So, so yeah, we do have a question. Uh -huh. And uh, Kathleen wants to know, what do we feel is the biggest risk for a retirement portfolio? Well, the, the probably the biggest risk is uh, right now is having too much money. Well, right now, I think the basic, biggest risk of the stock market crashes again. A lot of people are wondering what the future was going to bring these next next year, really. Um, if you've got too much there and, and, and don't have enough position to support your income, right now, that's kind of the biggest risk. We kind of have an interest rate risk with bonds, but that's still further out. Um, so that's kind of a quick answer to that.
If you know, I'll tell you, the risk is is not having a plan and not being diversified, not, and yeah. not knowing, not having a good defense. In a sense, the risk is having so much everything on offense or too much on offense and nothing on defense. Mm -hmm. You know, it varies if you got pensions, how much where's your money? But that's kind of the biggest. I'll tell you something else. If most, hopefully, most of the clients here in this last drop, yeah, we we went down, but it wasn't devastating. Like. But if you're not a client and, and you remember when the market fell by a third, you know, and it fell by a third in 33 days, I mean, in a record time, we lost a third of the value of the market. If you were feeling really sick then, uh, the good news is you got a do over. The market has miraculously come back up. I don't know if it's going to stay up, but you have a chance if you felt really bad to fix it. And, and if you're interested, give us a call. We'll do a risk reassessment, see where you are, run some strategies and see if we can help that. Uh, uh, hopefully my clients feel good, but if you're a client and you still took too much risk, give us a call and maybe we can arrange things differently in case it occurs again, uh, you know, and it can always occur. So, uh, this is so there, good there we go, a little look at this. Um, Sam, what else? Let's see, we're, we're got about six minutes to go. So we do uh, any other questions we have, or we have a few people who joined us. So I just want to say hi to Liz, Nadine, uh, Kathleen and uh, Angie. And uh, we do have another question from Liz and she wants to know, uh, how do you figure out your biggest retirement goals? Um, well, uh, boy, that, you know, I often like to sit here and say, you know, if we were sitting here three years from today and you were looking back over those three years or maybe 10 years to today, what would have had to occur for you to feel good about your retirement? And, and that's a good starting point to ask for the goals. We have a bunch of other things, spreadsheets we run through to say, do you have enough income and how much can you spend? I got people that that are going to run, you know, we, we catch that they're going to run out of money. I have some people going to die with too much money and they got the, we can show them how they can spend more in retirement than they thought. Uh, but that's a, but, but that starting question is a good point to, to go. Well, with. The exercise that, that I would use and what we talked about in one of our, uh, in, our, in one of our women's specific events is, um, it's not just looking at your goals first, you start with what your values are. And so it's really nice to be able to sit down with a piece of paper and just brainstorm the things that are really meaningful for you about your life. And it doesn't have to just be financial, um, the things that really matter to you. And then from there, you can break it out and start establishing goals that line up with those values that you have. So what it really takes is, is looking inwards to really seeing the things that matter to you, the things that you're worried about, uh, because you don't want to, I, I want everyone to be able to go to sleep and sleep like a baby. I don't want anyone tossing and turning, worrying about the future. Uh, so if you can pinpoint those things that are worrying you or concerning you and pinpoint the things that are really meaningful to you, then you can start to work from there to build a plan that accommodates those things. Oh, uh, Oh, hi, Grizel and David. Nice to see y'all. Well, I can't see you, but. Yeah, the, uh, <laughs> um, well, uh, and you know, that is money, is money is there to serve a purpose and understanding what you want that to do. Mm -hmm. That's what's important. And um, besides money, you've got your health. That's the other thing you want to be careful of. And, and, you know, hopefully we can all keep our health here in the, in the, in the weeks to come. Mm -hmm. um, you know, money, money itself is not the end. Money is a means to the end. Uh, so we want, we want to help you live your dreams, y'all. Um, but I'm really excited. So those of you who were here last week, uh, you've already seen this. Uh, but anybody who has been so kind as to send us in any questions or any potential topics uh, throughout this week, I have entered you into my wonderful hat. And uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick out a name and uh, this person or couple will receive two bottles of wine shipped directly to their door. 
delivered by a uniformed employee of the U.S. government. He's really excited about that. Um, but it's I from it's a, a local bottle shop for mental. It's located in Ogden. Uh, they have lots of wine and beer, and they're a really cool small business. So we're excited that we can still support a small business while we're doing this. Uh, Pat and Reba won last week, and so let's see who wins this week. And before I, uh, before I pull this, uh, anytime during this week, if you email us in with a potential topic or a question, uh, we will enter you into the hat for next week's drawing. So the winner is... Bob and Val. So congratulations, congratulations. Bob. Congratulations. Yay. Uh, so we will be in touch and we will be getting you your wine. So don't forget to send us in your questions and your potential topics and you'll be entered into the drawing for next week. Invite friends to this. I think it's also recorded so friends can watch it um, you know, later or you can catch up on the, you can go back and watch last week's. So last week's was good too. Next week, five questions every retiree should ask themselves. So mm -hmm. be here for that. Well, thank you all for joining us again for our second happy half hour. Uh, it's been a pleasure, Dad. Uh, while we're at a distance, it feels like we're, we're together. So cheers. And cheers. cheers to all of you, anyone who's drinking their beverage of choice. We this is herbal have... tea, by the way, just in case you're wondering. Uh, real Mine stuff will come later, here. trust me. <laughs> <laughs> Mine is uh, have... beer from Bill's, uh, an uh, IPA from Bill's, which is local, and it is delicious. Everyone have a great week, and we'll talk to you next Thursday. Thank you all for joining us. Bye -bye. Have a wonderful weekend.